the soil it's rotten, it's turned back to soil. But their soul, their spirit is with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. You die today, you with Christ forever. But this event is important because this is when we have the full redemption when we receive our resurrected bodies. Then the redemption is complete. Body, soul, and spirit. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We who are present, we will not differ from them that are already passed away. Verse 16. This is the event. This is what is going to happen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, this is what's going to happen. This earth, some have passed away and they've gone to heaven. They're with Christ in heaven. The brethren. Now this rapture is going to happen. It means they're being caught away. Being pulled out immediately. So when Christ will come, praise the Lord, He will bring these or them with him. They haven't had their resurrected body yet. They are in spirit. When the trumpet will sound, trump, and the shout of the archangel, shout of the archangel, which is Michael, all of a sudden these brethren will take upon themselves a new body, the same way Jesus died and rose up from the dead, immediately, instantly, in the twinkling of an eye, all of a sudden they receive their new body here on earth, and they rise up. And we who are alive, they are, you and I are alive at that day, we shall be caught up together with them to meet Christ in the air. Praise the Lord. So in the beginning of the verse he says, I do not want you to be ignorant. This is a mystery. Now he's explaining it. I do not want you to be like others who have no hope and sorrow. Not sure what's going to happen to them and what has happened to their brethren. So he explains it. They will come together with Christ. Because when you die, you are with Christ. But you are not complete because you have not received your resurrected bodies. When the trumpet will sound, in the twinkling of an eye, and the shout of the archangel, then that have come with Christ, they are already dead, or immediately. How it's going to happen, I do not know. But all I know is what the scripture says. It will instantly happen. All of a sudden, they have their bodies. And we who are alive will be caught up together with them to meet Christ in the air. In this event, Christ will not step on earth. Praise the Lord. That is chapter 19. Here, the church is raptured. The church is taken up. The church is taken away for a purpose. Praise God. Let's go into that scripture again. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is the hope of the church. We look ahead in hope for His coming. Okay, when we come to chapter 5, verse 1, But of the times and the season, brethren, 
You have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So what he's trying to say, we don't know the day. It will come as a thief in the night. But the seasons, you can know it. Because these events, before this happened, they will, there are already some prophecies coming to fulfillment. Now I want us to go to verse 9. And I want you to underline this very, very important <coughs> scripture. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. You remember Isaiah 61? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and judgment. Now listen to what Thessalonians 5 says, verse 9. You and I have not been appointed to wrath. In these seven years will be very difficult years. The seals are open and you will see what revelation will touch it in the days ahead. God has not appointed us to wrath. But unto salvation. Meaning this, the church will not go through these years of tribulation, which I shared last night. The church will be caught up and taken with Christ and meet Him in the air. Praise the Lord. That is the hope of the church. We will not go through this difficult time of His outpouring. It's called the wrath of the Lamb. It is the outpouring where seals are open. And judgment is falling upon this earth. And God is dealing with the whole earth. But he's also wanting to save Israel. This last seven years is a special time for God concerning his people and his city Jerusalem. According to Daniel 9. Last seven years. Praise God. Hallelujah. The church will be taken. When will the church be taken? Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Chapter 2 and chapter 3 is the church you see on earth. But then you'll see it no more. Because when you step into chapter 4, you don't see the church anymore. Praise God. Until you step into chapter 19. And you see the church with Christ coming from heaven to earth. So when did the church go to heaven? Let's go to chapter 4. After these things, can you change that and put the scripture? Okay, we're going to change that chart. Let's look at this one. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. This voice said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked. In some of your scripture you'll say, After these things. After what things? Here, after chapter 2 and chapter 3, seven letters to the seven churches, as he's dealing with it. When you come to chapter 4 verse 1, he says, after this, after what? After this church age, after these things, I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. He looked, where is John? On earth. He's in the island of Patmos. He's receiving the vision. He's receiving the instruction. And the letters to the seven churches. He's seeing it in a vision. But after this, the door is open in heaven. And he sees something. Or he hears something. Now let me stop here. Backtrack for a while. Every time in scripture, when heaven is open, something happens. Either someone is coming down, or someone is going up. Praise the Lord. You with me? Jacob went to sleep. And as he was dreaming, he saw the heavens open. And he saw angels coming down. And angels going up. When we come into the book of Acts, they are stoning Stephen. And Stephen 
looks up into heaven and he says, he sees the Messiah, Christ, is standing at the right hand of the Father. What is happening? Heaven is open to receive him into heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Every time you see scripture, heaven is open. Something like of this sort is happening. Praise God. So here in chapter 4, he said, I, There before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard, which we touched yesterday, the voice that is found in chapter 1. Okay, let's backtrack a little bit. Revelation chapter 1. Verse 10. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So when he heard something, it's like a voice and it sounds like a trumpet. And the voice is talking to him. Verse 12, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. When he turned, he saw Christ. It's described in verse 12, verse 13, verse 14, verse 15 and verse 16. Praise God. But he hears a voice. And it sounds like a trumpet. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 19. Which I shared with us is the break up of the book of Revelation. Breaks it and divides the book of Revelation into three. Write these things which thou hast seen. Which is chapter 1. The things which, which are. Meaning they are present and they are continuous. That's chapter 2 and chapter 3. And the things which shall be hereafter. Mark that word hereafter. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. What happens is, After this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice, the voice that you heard earlier in chapter 1, which I heard, was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, that voice said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Praise the Lord. So from chapter 4, the future start to unveil itself. Chapter 1 is the past, things which are, uh, things which you have seen. Chapter 2 and chapter 3, the things which are, because the church is still on earth, they are present, continuous, 2,000 years later, they are still on earth. The message is to the churches that are still on earth. Then when we come to chapter 4, verse 1, it says, He heard a voice as the heaven was opened, and the voice said, Come up here, I will show thee things that are hereafter. So from chapter 4, something happens here. The church is taken. How is it taken? <coughs> the sound of a trumpet. You find trumpet in chapter 4 verse 1. And I heard the voice. The voice sounds of a trumpet. Which I heard earlier. What did the trumpet say? What did that voice say? Come up here. In the book of Revelation you will see other areas. which say come up here. There is a rapture. There is a being caught away. But it's very important for us to know the message of the trumpet. When you touch Old Testament, you will see there is a trumpet, the, the voice of the trumpet, the sound of the trumpet, and the message of the trumpet. This last trump is the message to the churches. Praise the Lord. He heard a voice like the voice of a trumpet. What was it saying? It was speaking to him. I am the Alpha and the Omega. So the voice of the trumpet is speaking to the seven churches. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then the last trump happens. We are not talking about the seven seals that are open here. And the, and the seven trumpet judgments because that deals with Israel. Amen. You don't see the church anymore. Chapter 4, the church is no more on earth. The church is taken up. And then the church descends in chapter 19. Of the book of Revelation. From 4 to 19. You don't see the church. It is absent. God is dealing with Israel. Praise the Lord. 
Will there be people saved? Yes, they will be saved. Under the ministry of the 144,000. Praise God. The 144,000 haven't stepped into the scene yet. They will come in later, but not yet. This day. Praise the Lord. So, he says, I'll show you a mystery. I do not want you to be ignorant. These things are going to happen. In the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet shall sound. And he heard the voice of the archangel and the shout of the trumpet. Christ is going to speak. Come up here. And the church is taken up. Praise the Lord. I have to give us the timing so that we know that when we reach chapter 4 of Revelation, the church is taken. The church is no more. That's why we prepare ourselves for the coming King. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25, he is preparing for himself a glorious church, a glorious bride. Why? Because when the church is taken up, there will be something called the married supper of the Lamb that will be held in heaven, not on earth. It's held in heaven. Between Christ and his bride, the church. Praise God. Seven years of tribulation, we're going to touch it in the few days ahead. But it deals more with Israel. Now I had to share this yesterday, or was it the other day, that the church has not replaced Israel. God has his special dealings with Israel. And God has a special dealing with us, the Gentiles, as the church. So from chapter 2 and chapter 3, there is this gap. When this full time has come, then this event happens. The church is taken. Praise the Lord. And that is the hope of the church. And that hope purifies your faith. Amen. You want big hand clap to Jesus. <laughs> Chapter 4 verse 1. I'll read from the end of uh, verse 1. And then I'll read verse 2. And I will show the things which must be hereafter. Verse 2. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold a throne was set in heaven. He was on earth, immediately he is now in heaven. And God is opening up and allowing him to see the throne of God and the things that will occur in the time to come when the seals are being opened. Praise God. So, so when you'll find that John is in heaven in chapter 4, he's seeing everything happen, his position is in heaven, he's watching it from the heavens. Praise the Lord. The church has been taken. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right now, we are still in chapter 2 and chapter 3. He is preparing for himself a church, a glorious bride. So the church is not a denomination, like I said, it's not the building. It's you, the believers. You who believe and receive Christ as your personal Savior. The Holy Spirit is preparing you for this great event. And I'm looking forward. And may I say it like I said yesterday, as we draw closer to the day, your spirit will be stirred up and you will know that you know that you know that the time is at hand. Praise God. If you do not know, then something is totally wrong somewhere. Praise the Lord. We will deal with this seven years later on. We'll deal with the Antichrist later on. But I want us to understand this scripture. Because the rapture is the hope of the church. When the church look for, for his coming. Okay? This rapture, Christ doesn't come and stand on earth. The church meet him in the cloud. Seven years happen, and then he comes down in chapter 19. Then he steps onto this earth. The second coming is complete. Okay, any question? I know you have many questions. Praise God.